Hello YouTube! I just thought today that I would go over my emergency fund budget with you. So this is the budget that I have set up so that if uh, my husband loses his job, um, which we are expecting actually a job loss coming in August, sometime between August and November, uh, so if we're at, without work, what our budget would look like. And so I've worked on this for quite a while, and I think I finally narrowed it down to what uh, we could live off of uh, for six months. But because we know that we're having a job loss, we're actually aiming for a 12-month emergency fund. So right here is our goal progress uh, report sheet. And... We determined that if we're living off of rice and beans, like this is our bare minimum that we could possibly live off of uh, for 12 months, that we would need $31,300 um, and some change <laughs> to live for 12 months. And currently we have 17000 and we could live for six and a half months. So I guess you could say that we have complete, completed day... Ramsey's baby step three, but we are actually going to shoot for longer just because we have that unexpected job loss. And then if we do get a job right away after my husband loses his job, then we will put that extra towards retirement, towards paying off the mortgage. Uh, and so we have a goal to make 14000 to fill up our baby step three. So this is the remainder that we have. How we came up with these numbers, um, this emergency fund budget amount, this is actually just the amount after I totaled up all of the numbers down here. So I, because we wouldn't have an income, we wouldn't be paying a 10% tithe. We would just be paying a $10 fast offering. And this is the amount that we pay when we do a fast, which means going without food, and this is um, on, a, on a slim budget, we decided that $10 would be the amount that our family would have, would spend going without food for a 24-hour period that we can donate to our church. Our mortgage is, will stay the same, $811.48. Car insurance, health insurance, cell phones, these would all stay the same. Um, we are on a year contract with our cable and internet and so, unfortunately, this, to me, would go if we were in this situation. We wouldn't have cable. Probably still keep the internet. But uh, because we're on a year contract, we're locked into that one thirty three ninety five amount. Our energy, um, I put it up to 120 because on our highest months, it was about 120. And because uh, it could happen anywhere from August through November, if it is November, uh, we do use more heat in that in the December month. Water electric, 135. Groceries, 400. Gas, 100. So these are our regular costs. And then to keep our kind of sanity, I still decided we need a few sinking funds, such as a family fund account so that we can go out and do something with our little family. Uh, we would definitely still want to have Christmas even if we are on a emergency uh, in an emergency balance in an emergency situation. So we'd still contribute to Christmas. It's not as much as we've been contributing. Um, it in fact we contribute a hundred a month. So we would still put in a little bit aside and just have a smaller Christmas in an emergency situation. Birthdays and holidays, again, the same thing. We put about 75 aside each month, and so we would just cut down a lot on our spending, clothing needs, medication. Um, and, and the only reason I'm keeping actually clothing on here is because we do have two growing boys who uh, will need clothes. My husband and I probably would stop buying clothes at this point, but our children who are growing will still need clothes. Medication, I still keep a sinking fund of $50 in here. I get a medic I get a prescription every three months that costs around sixty six dollars and then I just like having a little extra on hand in case we uh, need 
to get any other sort of medications in case there's colds, bugs, flus that go around and we need to buy other things. And then the pet care, this would be just for food. We would probably not have uh, savings for extra, extra things for him at that point. We would have some leisure accounts still open. These are way less than we have before, but Dave recommends that you keep um, that you keep some money in in your leisure funds still uh, and try to live life as normally as possible. This is kind of our rice and beans diet, our our rice and beans budget, uh, and and it wouldn't be living as normally as possible. But um, this would be you know our our bare minimum amount, but we would still keep some eating out money and we'd probably just do really cheap meals <laughs> to eat out. We'd do dollar hamburgers from McDonald's, you know, that type of thing so that we still feel like we're going out and doing something, but we would probably do, you know, Taco Tuesday in Utah. You can go to Del Taco and buy three tacos for a buck on Tuesdays after like three o'clock. So we do cheap things like that. Um, I'd still give us a little bit of mad money. We, we currently right now get $50 a month for mad money. And so this would just be like what we can, you know, just a little bit here if we need to have a little spending cash and then date nights. I think date nights would be really important in a, in a jobless situation because this would be a chance to get away from the kids and talk about these real issues or to not talk about them and to, you know, have a chance to get away from the stress of what's going on. Now, most likely if we are in a situation where we're without work, um, I'm sure between my husband and I, we'd get some side hustles and, um, you know, I, I would love to work I, I was a teacher, so I could do some substitute teaching. I think it'd be fun to uh, work retail again, even. I did that when I was in high school and college, and I loved it. Uh, I, I'm sure my husband could pick up a job somewhere so that we're making a little bit of an income still while we're waiting for a long-term job. But uh, at this point, if if we're without work completely when I added up all of these numbers, so when I added up our regular costs, which is 2,354.55, our sinking funds, 160, and our leisure, 95, that total comes to $2,609.55. And uh, that is what we would take out of our emergency fund budget each month in the in the situation that we have zero income coming in. So this is our emergency fund budget. And if we do happen to have a, a different type of emergency, such as um, our car breaks down, I'm hoping that by the time that we have those types of things, these, these sinking funds will be built up enough. So I'm hoping by the time, you know, August through November comes around, we'll have enough in these other sinking funds that we would stop putting money into in an emergency situation, but I'm hoping that we'll have enough built up in a home repairs account and um, a car repairs account and all of these different sinking funds. So I'm hoping that we'll have enough in these accounts that we can rely on them while we're without a job. So right now in our home repairs accounts, we have $138 in our car repairs. We have $295.20. So hopefully um, these little sinking funds will give us a little bit of extra insurance in that type of a situation. So this is how I set up my sinking funds uh, or my emergency fund budget using my sinking funds and our um, emergency fund amount right now. Uh, again, we have we're looking for thirty one thousand. We have around seventeen thousand, which would on this budget let us live for over six months, but again, we're just saving up as much as we can right now, knowing that we have a job loss coming up, and this just gives us a little bit of security, and then uh, if we end up getting a job right after, we're going to throw that money into our retirement and into paying off the mortgage. We've already uh, contributed this year's amount of college funds for our kids, and so we're, we're we've done that already, and so... Uh, 
I think we're just continuing on with the baby steps. I hopefully how Dave would suggest. I don't know if he would say that we need more than a 12 months emergency fund, but this just makes us feel a little bit safer in this type of scenario. So I hope you have a good day. Please um, like, comment, subscribe. I hate saying that. I hate like begging for your uh, I hate for your um subscriptions and likes and everything, but. It actually makes me super excited to see when somebody does like a video or they do subscribe. And so um, if you're into that sort of thing, do it. If you're not, don't do it. I'm sorry if it's a awkward cry out <laughs> for you guys to like, comment, subscribe. So do whatever feels good to you. But I sure appreciate it when I see your comments and likes and subscriptions. So I hope you all have a great day and happy budgeting.